Hi folks, I'm having a chat with Posey Parker, the founder of Standing for Women and a person who has been, I think it's, uh, it's honest to say, persecuted by the radical trans lobby. Uh, is that true? Uh, yeah, I've been interviewed under caution by the police twice, you know, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's Welcome true. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <laughs> so you 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 found yourself uh, running afoul of the intersectional feminist lobby. Uh, yes. Would you like to just tell us about your background and how these people ended up getting introduced into what it is you do? Um, so my background is literally uh, nearly 18 years ago I had a baby and then I stayed at home. <laughs> and, uh, and I've got four of them. And then about 2015 I was quite aghast about the Tories being elected. I joined this very badly named awesome lefty women group on Facebook and it grew and then a lot of the women weren't actually women and it was um, a terrible thing to point that out. Right. And so then once I found out that you weren't allowed to talk about it and you weren't allowed to say that they are men, uh, I, I just started talking about it all the time <laughs> because that's what you do, isn't it? When yep. someone says you're not allowed to touch that, you're like, that's all you want to do. And, yep. I, and I wanted to find out the root of it why people didn't know what was going on. Then I stumbled into the IOC stuff, the, Inter um, the Olympic Committee rules allowing men to compete. That was about 2016 and it escalated. And then I sort of shot into people's consciousness when Susie Green, the um, CEO of Mermaids, mm -hmm. reported me to the police. Right, uh, th right, okay, that's, that's a really great intro. So um, what were you reported to the police for? Six tweets. Wow. They got my, and the, the shocking thing, right, it's not just that I was interviewed by the police, but they got my details released by Twitter. Oh, wow. Okay. For six tweets. Um, so before, before we go on, uh, could you describe what Mermaids is? Um, Mermaids calls itself a support group, group for trans kids, mm -hmm. which I think is something that shouldn't exist and doesn't exist. Uh, trans kids, that is. Uh, but the, really what they are is a lobby group right. with a vested interest. My personal view is that Susie Green, who took her son to Thailand for his 16th birthday to be castrated, uh, which is one of the things. Well, but, but I think they were like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend their position Go uh, as devil's advocate. Uh, they wouldn't use the term castrate, they would say uh, transitioned, wouldn't they? They would, but he did have but his it testicles But it is removed. castration, yes, mm. yes, it yeah. is, yeah. So I like to use very clear language so everybody <laughs> has in their heads exactly what that means. You know, it's quite euphemistic to talk about transition Seems that I don't even think that that's a thing that happens. But we have to talk about the fact that he did have his testicles removed and his penis inverted, because then we know what we're talking about. And that was a 16 year old. Yeah. And I think if we try and sugarcoat it, it becomes something all brave and stunning. Mm. And it's not, it's absolute, it's barbaric and, and atrocious. Um, so she took her son to Thailand to be castrated. And, um, and I said this on Twitter and that was one of the things she didn't like. Right, and uh, what did the police say to you about all this? Oh my goodness. So they, this guy phones and he's left loads of like missed calls and it's like text message, this is the police. Right. So I thought that can't be true because surely the police knock on your door, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Or do something, but no, 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 it's a text message. Right. So I just ignored it and it, they just got more frequent. So I phoned them. Right. And he was like really friendly, he was like from Yorkshire. Yeah. And he was like, well, you know, and we have, I have conversations with my kids about this around the dinner table. And, um, and he said, oh, you're, if you don't come in for this voluntary interview, then you'll be wanted. And I was so having such a friendly conversation. I was like, oh, well, that happens to me all the time. I'm often wanted <laughs> like this and sort of mildly flirtatious. And, and he laughed and, and then, I wasn't so quick and then I got um, a solicitor, quite a, a good solicitor, mm. and once he'd had a conversation with this policeman, um, his tone changed somewhat and then he was like, you're, you're we wanted, and I said, well, what, what does that mean? He said, well, you, if you try and leave the country, we'll arrest you. If you get pulled over for speeding, we'll arrest you. Um, and if, you, if we still don't get to you, then we'll come to your house and we'll arrest you in front of your family and you'll sit in the cells. Oh, that's a very voluntary interview. Though. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. I, I just want to say, I got the same thing myself. Um, when, when Jess Phillips reported me to the Birmingham <gasps> police, they sent, they sent me an email saying, you know, can you come for a voluntary interview or you'll be wanted? And I was like, okay. So I, I spoke to a friend of mine who's a, a lawyer and she said, don't go, don't do it. You know, make sure they, they you know, issue a proper warrant. But I, I went up there and uh, I, I spoke to the Birmingham police about the 
nonsense that's going on on the yeah, internet. Yeah. And I mean, you you could tell that they they thought like because it was a joke I'd put on my YouTube channel, and they're, they're playing this this blooper reel of jokes that I'm telling, saying you saying this was a joke. I'm like, how is it not? <laughs> you know? like, but but by the and so I essentially had to go through like for about two hours and just explain everything that had led up to this point. And you could see their eyes rolling back in their head, thinking, oh god, this is above my pay grade. You know, this is this is like you know nonsense on the internet sort of thing. And eventually they just dropped it. So yeah, I was quite lucky really. Um, but what happened with you? Did you go in? I went in. I did no comment. I felt right. like I was in some sort of fantastic movie. Um, <laughs> and I was this brave woman. And I just, I was quite defiant. I was really quite, I, I treated them with quite a lot of contempt. Because right, right. I, how dare they waste my time. Yeah. Um, when just down around the corner is like some trafficked women in a brothel. And I think they should be spending time doing that. And so um, they, it was about an hour and a half. And then they tried to charge me, but it didn't work, with malicious communications, public order offences, nuisance, conspiracy, because somebody else shared my opinion. And I discussed it. What? Uh, yeah, no, I, like... But conspiracy to do what? I, I don't know. Because <laughs> it's an Say action. transphobic things. I have no oh, oh. idea. Right, OK, yeah. But I'd, I'd also misgendered, and it was hateful. So there's a man, <laughs> there's a man called Janet Mock, who, right, who yeah. is quite well known. Yeah. Um, and he had said that it's validating for trans girls, so that means teenage boys, yeah. it's validating for them to do sex work, uh, to validate their gender identities. And so he's basically talking about kids in prostitution, and I had wow. said something right. about that, and that was hateful. Transphobic. I, I can believe that that is transphobic. <laughs> I honestly do. That's mad, though. I mean, this, this is the same thing with the uh, the grooming gangs. The the same kind of opinion, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. like, I, I mean, like with you calling it castration, I call them Muslim rape gangs because yeah. that's what they are. Yeah. And I'm I'm sick of the euphemisms. And uh, I I also do it deliberately to be offensive. Um, but it's true. You know, it's mm. a, it's a, it's an honest truth. But the, the police were saying how um, they had issues from orders from the Home Office that they were to treat these girls as if they'd made a life choice. And it's like, but this is a 12-year-old girl yeah. being pimped by gangs of Muslim Pakistani men. Mm. Like, that, that's not a life choice. And then when you read, like, their accounts of it, when they finally get out of these terrible situations, they're like, look, I didn't have control over my life. They would threaten me and they would beat me and brand me sometimes and things like this. I mean, it's, it's a true house of horrors that's going on in this country. And we're not supposed to talk about it. No. It's, it's really quite awful, isn't it? But we are supposed to talk about tweets. Yes. And hate speech, just not yeah. hateful actions. Yes. Um, if you're protected uh, by maybe causing racial tensions, if we bring, if we talk about it. Well, that yeah, that's I, I I hate that I hate that terminology. It's like, well, if we arrest these child rapists, we'll cause racial tensions. And I mean that, that I don't think they understand what they're saying there. What they're saying there is that the Muslim community is permissive of these rape gangs. Yeah. And if you address these rape gangs, you're you're being a racist. Yeah. It's, and I don't think the Muslim community thinks this. You know, at least not largely. You know, no. but that it's it's amazing how then they end up giving cover and support to child actual child rapists, including feminists. So yeah. I've been told off for my racism for saying, look, we as in we as in feminists, not mm. that I am one anymore, but we are allowed to talk about rape culture and the way that men behave in a general. I thought we that can, was the point. <laughs> <laughs> but we're allowed to talk about that, but yeah. we're not allowed to talk about specifically yeah. uh, rape culture within a subculture of men in the, I just don't, yeah. we know that in Pakistan, there are baby girls in carrier bags on rubbish tips. Yeah. We know that if we were to go there, we would feel more vulnerable than, than living, walking down the street here, but we're not allowed to talk about it. You, you would probably get in trouble. Uh, I've, I've had lots of friends who have been to majority Muslim countries and they, they, they just describe the, the social atmosphere as being very, very different. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a, a friend of mine, um, when he was 16, his, his father went to Saudi Arabia, uh, moved to Saudi Arabia for two years to do some uh, military contracting, you know, some work out there. And uh, the, the very first day, they get off the plane, they're walking around, and the police of vice and virtue uh, storm up to his father, put finger right in his face, control your woman because his wife didn't have her hair covered. And that was massive no-no. And uh, before, before me and my wife were together, she had gone to Tunisia for a holiday, uh, but she hadn't gone with a man, it was on her mm. own. And she was harassed 
constantly yeah. by literally everyone. Men in the street, the hotel uh, bellboys, things like mm -hmm. this. They'd ring up her room at night and stuff, and, she, and she's just like, no, leave me alone, you know. And, it, and it's, it's a totally different yeah, world that's view. that's men. It's not particularly yeah. <laughs> those countries. That's all men. Yeah, right. It's like, the, I, I, don't, I, I really don't think British men tend to act that Absolutely way. Absolutely <laughs> not. It's really, I, I just... I don't understand the cognitive dissonance when these, when many of the women that I talk to about this, they recognise it elsewhere, yeah. but then they lose it when it. Well, the fact that uh, was it Copenhagen where loads of women were grabbed um, oh, one uh, New Year's no, Eve. Uh, Cologne. In Cologne. Germany. But we weren't allowed to talk about that. Well, Jess Phillips said that it was like an average night out in Birmingham. Oh yeah. Which I mean, Birmingham's a city with high immigration, so maybe she's, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe she's, she's right. maybe she's signalling to the uh, to the populace there or something. I don't know. You know, I mean. <laughs> um, but so, uh, apart from the police, how have you been treated by the activists themselves? Um, well, I get mass reported right. all the time, so I'm banned from all the. Um, that's an exaggeration. I'm banned from Mumsnet. I'm banned from Twitter. And my Posey Parker is now banned from Facebook. Uh, right. So I get, I do get threats. I mean, I got 50 messages to my mobile. I don't know how he got my number um, saying, I hope your child dies of cancer. And I am just really graphic yeah. and gruesome. And I think I just responded with smiley faces. Um, <laughs> but I'm quite effective, so I do get targeted quite a lot, yeah. and I'm quite well known. Mm. And because I don't fit into other minority kind of groups, I'm a little more of a threat because I am just a regular, you know, I'm a schoolgate mum. Yeah. I'm the woman that talks too much in the in a queue. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm that woman. So I can't be um, sort of just popped into a little okay. box that I'm a I'm a radical feminist. Therefore, you know, I'm just. It's a small little group. I'm, mm. I'm every woman. Yeah. So, um, apart from the deplatformings, um, the I mean, for example, the the slogan you have in your T-shirt, <laughs> I don't find that very controversial. That's the standard English definition of what we yeah for the term woman, uh, adult human female. And uh, w were you involved with the campaign where this was being put on billboards? Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was you. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I assumed it was. Mm. Um, can you tell me about the campaign? So, I had just been cast out of uh, the lefty feminist... Denounced. Yeah, totally <laughs> denounced. For sort of saying that I don't think little girls should wear hijabs uh, <laughs> was, was one of them. Well, so just to interrupt that, that, isn't that a standard Muslim response to that as well? Because yeah. the hijab signifies yeah. sexual maturity. Yeah. That's why women, so young girls don't wear it. So no. They shouldn't wear it. And I'd, I'd trained as a teacher in Leeds. Yeah. Um, and I'd also worked in a school that was 99% Pakistani Muslim boys. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to be taken out because it was considered not particularly safe because they would, they would talk about me um, in Urdu. But clear, clearly I could could feel what they were saying. Yeah. Um, anyway, I digress. So um, it, about a week before I was due to speak at the Women's Place UK meeting, um, they put a statement out that they had problems with my views on race and religion, which basically says you're an Islamophobic racist, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, and they put this statement out and I was, for all the things that trans activists have said, uh, I found that the most distressing because that was just kind of being shot by my own, by my own side. Yeah. Um, and so I knew that I wanted to continue doing things, but my whole name had been poisoned by these accusations. So I tried to do something um, sort of under the radar. And I just got to thinking, like, what is it? What is it that's really under threat? And it was the word woman, because mm. already they'd started um, calling us cervix havers and menstruators. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so, but it isn't, I mean, that, that sounds like actual objectification to me, as in they're mm. reducing you to merely a part of your body, not even your entire person, yeah. but just, you know, he, there is a, you know, a, what you could call an object that is you, and then you mm. as a person, you're completely sidelined and focused on mm. your... Well, they want to take the word woman away from us yes. because they can't have it. Yes. And so uh, I just got to the thing where I was like, the actual nub of this argument, the, the, the root of it all is the word woman. Mm. So I'm going to put something that I know will drive them insane. Yeah. Um, and we thought about the Times and advertising in the Times, so that's like 40 grand and I didn't have that. that. Uh, but like a big page. 
Um, so we thought of a billboard. The Labour Party had just done crazy things. Um, the mayor of Liverpool had just said some horrible things in a council meeting about um, women who objected. I think it was about the same time the women had put little penises. Women don't have penises all over statues in Liverpool. Radical, yep. Um, and so it just seemed a beautiful place because that's where Labour were having their conference. And so I just found a billboard and we just <laughs> stuck it up because it was 700 quid. And the thing is, I'm sure that most like regular people are just going about their lives, not particularly political. Probably just like, why does that billboard say you know the, mm. the, the dictionary definition of woman? Mm. Uh, but so yeah, what what was the trans response to it? I take it they lost their minds. Well, they complained and they, it got removed. So they said it was transphobic and it made trans women feel unsafe. <laughs> okay. Um, so a dictionary is transphobic by that yeah. rationale. Yeah, burn the dictionaries, that's what I say. <laughs> burn them all. God. Okay, so, uh, uh, and, and you are obviously not allowed to enter any of these spaces now, you're persona non grata, presumably. Yes. Right, okay, so what, what is it that, you, um, what is it you, you're actually trying to achieve? Because, like, the, I think that, they, that what the, they, they've got a very uh, clever method of effectively never defining you by your own terms. Mm -hmm. And never, never, you know, so they control any narrative that's woven about you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've only ever heard negative things, obviously, but I don't believe them because I know the people who are saying these things are congenital liars and yes. I have long experience of this. Uh, so, but what, what is it you'd like to achieve exactly? I'd like to achieve the complete um, uh, halt of the erosion of any women's rights. And by women's rights, I don't mean separate to men's rights. I mm. mean that sexed, segregated spaces, which I think both sexes actually enjoy, totally I think they should be kept. <laughs> So ultimately, pro segregation. <laughs> I'm <Right>. pro segregation. <laughs> I'm practically um, yeah. a right wing Islamist. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I'm up for. Are we going to have to cut that? <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 I'm, joking, I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm up for my 13 year old daughter not having to worry that she's going to see a penis in a changing room. Radical. I'm up for women who go to prison uh, primarily for non violent crimes not to have to share with a rapist. Um, <sighs> you know, I'm up for the absolute halt to any transitioning of children, any medical yeah. intervention, intervention um, of children, and I would include um, children up to sort of 18. Um, that's, you don't get to make decisions about your body. You don't get to have a tattoo. You don't get to um, start smoking. You don't get to drink. drink yeah. um, so you shouldn't be able to make a decision, which ultimately so many people regret. So that's, and I want everyone to talk about it. Yeah, I, I, and it is an important conversation to be had. Because it, it is actually quite wild when you think about it. Like, we, we actually don't give children autonomy of their bodies because they're not, they're not able to give informed consent yeah. about what they're doing. Mm. And I mean, I just think back to when I was 16, it's like, I'm so glad this sort of stuff didn't exist then. Because, you know, I, I, I'm sure I wouldn't have, I, you know, I've never felt like I'm not a man or something, but like, who knows? You know, yeah. if everyone around you is constantly telling you the same thing, and there, I think there is a lot of um, not not it's not. I, I wouldn't just call it support. I do think that they're being encouraged to go down this route. One hundred percent. Yes. Uh, and I want everyone to know. I think that's the thing. At the moment, we are being coerced and manipulated without consent. So it's not like we're allowed to talk about these things. Mm. These are being absolutely thrust upon us in our schools. Yeah. Like get them young, and. The people that don't want children, that do want children to have autonomy over their bodies, we used to call those people paedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> because they use a similar language. You know, we, we don't yep. say, well, my 13 year old, well, she's absolutely, she loves Nigel down the road. I know he's 40, but she knows her own body and mind. Yeah, no. So she can make a decision on that. We don't, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't do that. It, it is just a lifestyle choice I've yeah. heard from the police. Um, yeah, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I, I find it, I find it very interesting how um, I'm a parent too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've I've got a son and a daughter, and you have your your children. And we are concerned about the safety and sanctity of our children. And I notice that the people who are opposing this are always childless. Yeah. And actually, kind of hate children. They're very pro-abortion, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. shout your abortion, all that sort of thing. And I, I do wonder if there's any kind of connection there. You know the lack of understanding of what a child is actually like from having actually, you know, raised one. 
Uh, it, it concerns me, but what, what concerns me more is that the authorities are actually going along with all of this. Like this yeah. should be totally fringe stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, no, you know, nobody, these people, you know, okay, you can have your potty beliefs if you want, but I, I really don't think they should be adopted as a rule. Yeah. For, for most people, because I, I think that they know most people follow this. And, and you were saying about the regrets. Uh, th this is something I, I'm, I'm going to make a bit of a video on at some point, because I've seen so many horror stories, like mm. absolute horror stories, where people have transitioned. It's not been the glorious, beautiful, golden land of plenty that they expected it to be. Yeah, if you, can, if you can believe such a thing. And there's nothing they can do. No, because uh, it's it's too far gone. You yeah, know, every, the operations have been had, and and just to, for anyone who who wants to know uh, the sort of thing I'm talking about, uh, there, there's one post that sticks in my mind where this this person was saying that for you know for years they, I think they were like 17 or 18 for for years they'd been convinced that they were a woman trapped in a man's body, so they took the hormones which themselves are chemical castration and also greatly increase your risk of cancer, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'd, they'd gone through with the full operation, and it turns out that they actually didn't have a vagina. They, they, they had a hole that wanted yeah. to heal up. And the, I'm using their words, so yeah. you know, I'm not, this is not how I would describe it necessarily. Um, but it also um, <clears throat> stank of feces. Yeah. Because it's all very, very close. And the doctor said that the was colon. normal. That's yes. why. Yes, and the doctor said that was all very normal, and uh, this person was like, I can't believe no one told me about this in advance. I can't do anything about this. I feel like I've ruined my life, and I want to die. Mm. And I read that with a huge amount of sympathy. I was, I, you know, I was very disturbed by it myself, yeah. actually, because, I mean, the, all of the institutions around them have led them down this, this path to the point where they want to commit suicide. I mean, what? That's totally irresponsible, isn't it? Well, you sort of think with these... I always think with these things, um, and I'm going to use old man, um, all identity politics of yeah. me, but you, there's, there's places that we know that uh, are predominantly run by old men, and I didn't know that they were so easily fooled into <laughs> things that make no sense. So... Um, you sort of expect it to stop when it got to doctors because people would talk about cancelling or you'd expect in, in Parliament that people would say, what, what do you mean? They're, they're, we're doing this to children. We're yeah. giving them puberty blockers that aren't reversible and once they're on puberty blockers, their destination is transition. Mm. Um, and we know that puberty blockers uh, are chemical castration and they're the cross-sex hormones, like for women, um, who go through transition, they take testosterone. That increases your osteoporosis. Yep. Um, once you take testosterone, that causes something called vaginal atrophy, which is like going through the menopause, but super, super painful. Right. So every time you get engaged in any sort of sex, um, what, I'll try and be really delicate, what sort of um, seizes doesn't release? So then oh. you can end up in chronic pain for days. Right. And the way you resolve that is by having a hysterectomy in your early 20s, which then increases your risk of cancer, mm. Alzheimer's, you know, chronic illness, anxiety. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> you sort of think, that can't, come on, that doesn't really happen, does it? That doesn't happen. It's happening all the time. Yeah. And what, one of the things that I found concerning, uh, I, what, what's the name of the, the transgender unit on the NHS? Tavistock. That's it. Uh, there, wasn't there something like 100%? A case of referrals being put onto this course. So every child that was referred to them was then further, you know, down the road of becoming transgender. And I, I read, uh, I read a statement by them where essentially they they'd come to the conclusion that that meant there was a huge amount of demand for this and they were underserving the public. And it's like, okay, that's one interpretation. But the other interpretation is that all of these people around them are dyed in the wool ideologues who are, you mm. know, essentially funneling these mm. children down towards the end and essentially grooming them into yeah. this. Yeah. Well, loads of them have left. Loads of the yeah. people that work there have left. And I did a talk at the House of Lords and Marcus Evans, who was the old chair, mm. and his wife is Susan Evans, who's bringing the case the judicial review against the Tavistock. Right. Um, and they've both worked there. And what I know from somebody else that worked there is a lot of the parents were coming in, they were really homophobic. So they didn't want they didn't want a gay child. They'd yeah. rather have their child born in the wrong body because that erased the gay. <laughs> right, you know? okay. Well I mean that's 
one way of viewing it. It's, well, it's, yeah. it's the ultimate in conversion yeah. therapy. And what's bizarre <laughs> is you have to affirm these kids, yeah. which ultimately is conversion therapy against being yeah. gay. But at the same time, the government's trying to bring in no conversion therapy. Mm. Um, and, so, and, and making you having to affirm. So it's okay to have progressive conversion therapy, but yeah. religious conversion therapy, even though the religious conversion therapy probably doesn't involve castration. No, right. and you can unravel that. Yes. You know, as, as yeah. an adult, and I'm not saying that's a good thing, or you can unravel it so it's fine. It's pretty awful, Yeah. whatever. But it, it's not physical permanent changes. No. In, you know, because that's the thing, these are such dramatic changes to a human body. And I, I can't help but look at this like... Um, like we'd look at uh, phrenology or something like that, you know, like, you know, go back a hundred, in a hundred years time, I think people are going to look at us like we were insane. Absolutely. You, know? you, you, you mutilated children because they wanted to pretend they were a different gender. It's, it's mad. It's, I, I think that the word gender, I think, has totally allowed this nonsense. Mm. Um, mm. You know, pardon to pick, pick you up on that. I, I think if we use sex, then we all understand what we're talking about. Mm. But when you talk about gender, it's this kind of intangible thing that doesn't really mean anything to anyone, so it can mean anything to everyone. Um, I, 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 I can see where you're going with that, but I think that then you leave the door open for them to say, but actually, uh, for example, the, the definition, that's the definition of a gender. You know, a woman is a gender, it's not a sex. Uh, because otherwise children, you know, female children, would have to be women too. And, you know, they're not until they reach adulthood. So I think there is a distinction to be drawn between sex and gender. And I don't think that that's inaccurate. And I think that if you were to try and erase that, they would be able to, to catch you on that. Uh, the, the problem is they think that gender is disconnected from the biology of being female. Uh, or male, obviously. But they now use the word female. So when I started out in this 2015, mm. they used trans woman. Yeah. And that quickly went to woman. And now it's female. And now we're in this really? weird... Yeah. yeah okay, okay. So now they'll say that being a woman is more about what's here than your body. Right. So they've totally erased the, the, the connection yeah. between yeah. Um, gender yeah. and sex. Yeah, and I, I, I don't agree with that at all. I th and... and uh, I, I, I spoke to a, a, a chap uh, the other day called Stephen, who's a left-wing atheist, and you know they they he agrees with the term trans women are women, uh, but he also agrees that there is a biological connection between female and woman. So I don't know how he resolves <laughs> that contradiction. And, yeah. Um, I, I you know I, I I'm sure he he'll have an answer for it at some point, but um, I mean what what. The, so the thing that they'll complain about is that like, you, you're oppressing these poor uh, trans children who are actually uh, completely sure about their entire future mm -hmm. uh, when they're a child. Um, what's, what should be done about the people who believe that they're trans then? What, when they're adults? When they're children. Um, absolutely nothing. Right, okay. Just nothing. Right. Just like if my son says to me, Mummy, I really wish you had a Lamborghini. Um, it's just, well, we don't have one. Well, maybe, uh, maybe the, the current family car is a trans car and identifies as a Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, we'll put the plate on the outside. Well, I, I do receive a lot of um, alt-right money, so perhaps <laughs> oh, I'll just buy one with, with, with that. Yeah, according to the trans activists and some women. Yeah. Apparently, I receive absolutely loads of coin from from far-right think tanks right, in America. Yeah, yeah. I just like to say this is sponsored by the Koch brothers. You know? <laughs> Yay. I mean, if they want to give me money. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't turn it down. Um, I, I think you just, I think you have to level with children yeah. and just say that it's just, it's simply not a thing and lots of people can feel like that. Mm. And, you know, when you reach adolescence and puberty and the world makes a little more sense about how you position yourself, um, then you can think again, and when you're an adult, you can make different decisions. I see. I don't mind if an adult, you know, who can make informed consent, uh, make decisions based on their own informed consent. I don't mind what they do to their body, even mm -hmm. if it's a terrible idea, in my opinion. You know, it's their body, their property. They they own themselves. You only got one. Mm. Go nuts. You know. Uh, but I I completely agree about the the. the essentially the grooming of children to become transgender. Yeah. I think that's actually terrible. Um, and I do agree that, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy for them to take these operations and stuff. Even though, And I think one, one thing that is important for people to know is that these are not well-tested operations. This is all being developed 
uh, by trial and error. Yeah. And, and like the the there was a there was a I think it was a BBC report the other day, or it was a Channel Four report that just openly said, well, these are untested drugs. These are, we don't know what the long-term consequence of these things are going to be. And then they had a 16-year-old that they were interviewing who wanted to transition. To, they said, well, I'm just going to do it anyway because I'm brave. And it's like, that's so reckless. I know. You know. An actual child is being encouraged by all the authorities around them to take untested medication, take uh, un not uh, insufficiently developed surgical procedures yeah. to castrate themselves uh, in order to well, I don't want to say pretend, but try and achieve the opposite sex. Mm. It just seems ridiculous. Well, can you imagine, like when this all I, I, when this all goes out of fashion and we we yeah. wake up and realise what we've done? Yeah. Can you imagine being someone that was part of the grooming of those kids, knowing? Because you you've got to know someone, yeah. even if you pretend that what you're doing and you convince yourself that what you're doing is good. There's got to be a bit of you somewhere that has this kind of. Should I really do that? Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and how am I going to live with myself after yeah. all this when I've obliterated that person's body, um, that their pretend vagina is falling out or rotting inside of them? Or um, there's a girl in America and she's had 31 corrective surgeries for the phalloplasty. Right. What does uh, that mean? So a phalloplasty is when you have a pretend penis made out of a tube of flesh. And so they, right. they okay. sever the whole of your forearm flesh, right? And they replace it with a square of flesh from your leg because that's less hairy, so that's more. Now, right. I don't have a penis. I think it's probably more sensitive than my forearm. I don't know that because I don't have one, but I don't think it's the same sort of skin. And so then they... I, I do have one and I know it's not the same sort of skin. <laughs> so then you have this made into a pretend penis. Right. that they attach to you here. Right. Um, and then you can get something else that will help it inflate. But obviously it doesn't work like a penis because, no. I don't know, it's not a penis. You're not going to have any um, nerve endings No, and sensations. sometimes you get necrosis, so that, that bit of flesh oh, wow. dies and you replace it with another one. So she'd had 31 surgeries. Complications include urinating out of her anus, having a stoma. <laughs> Sorry, hang on, I was explaining that. Uh, so they can't do it. Yep. Right, so they can't connect the urethra to uh -huh. the, the phalloplasty penis. Yeah. So they have to now pee out of their anus. So okay. 31 surgeries, and then they show her at the end of it. So she's been in hospital about a year because, like you say, yeah. they don't know what they're doing, essentially. Yes. I mean, you can tell that this is obviously experimental. Yeah. Um, and it, how much money? It costs about $250,000 in America to get that surgery. Right. So then she was in the car and she genuinely looked elated because she'd stood up and urinated for the first time and and everyone in the comments thousands of comments like oh you're so brave you're inspirational and I just thought I cannot imagine pinning my entire happiness and self-worth on that lie mm. that won't last anyway mm. you know yeah who knows how this all ages like physically like you know like what in 10 years time you know how does the, the, the artificial penis even look? Yeah, it's or, just so barbaric. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty extreme. Mm. Uh, and I, I, you see, I, I don't know how much I can say, really, you know, I'm probably in trouble. But, so one, one, of the, one of the interesting things I thought was that Sky News did a report uh, not so long ago that hundreds of people are trying to detransition now. Because, uh, and I, sp I spoke to a chap uh, myself when I was doing my MEP campaign. Uh, he, he had gone through a portion of the transitioning uh, process. He hadn't gone for the surgery uh, because he wasn't sure about his own mm. general because he, he, he was attracted to men and he was very effeminate. And essentially, I, I don't know if he was groomed into it, but he'd, he'd gotten to the mindset, well, I, I'm probably a woman trapped in a man's body. And then he, he went through a part of it and then realized, actually, no, I'm, I'm just gay and I, and I just am a bit effeminate and that's okay. And he'd come out of it then, and he wanted to share this story to hopefully yeah. help other people who might have been in the same mindset. And I think that's probably a common phenomenon. What do you think? I think it's very. I think it's very common. I mean, I, I don't think it's real, right? right? So, I'm do what you like with your body, and do it because you're wrong. It's oh, still yeah. your body. That's yeah. fine. But I don't think there's a, such a thing as being born in the wrong body. I, you know, I don't believe in God either. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm not down with um, intangible kind of lies. Um, <laughs> Just uh, disavow. <laughs> um, you know, it's fine. If people find, if I'm not going to go up to somebody who believes in God and tell them until I'm blue in the face that there isn't a God, the yeah. same as I don't, 
I don't need to go up to a man. Those, most of the men don't think they're women. They just fancy themselves with breasts. Um, mm. And it's called autogynophilia. Right. And I think that that's, that's much more common. And those men are the ones that are driving this through kids. Because if you can, if you can show that kids feel like this, mm. then you can say it's not a fetish because you're not going to sexualize those children. Mm. And I think that's, that's the tricky thing. Um, just to go back to the bit you were saying about the authorities, that's the bit that gets me, the fact that we are teaching it in schools. There was a school recently where a child was like, are you male, four years old, are you male, are you female, are you trans? My son is four years old and I really don't want that being in his school, I have to say. No. Well, it's... you do. Have you read your school policies? Uh, no. You probably should. I probably should. It's in, it's in the curriculum. I went in and I've asked it. My, my kids' schools obviously love me a lot. <laughs> oh, I bet they're big fans of yours. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I, I went in and I got, um, I got mermaids taken off of the, um, if you go to, yeah. if you have any of this, these issues, I got them taken off as an advisor. Mm. Um, they've been taken off the NHS mm. as well. Uh, but they're, they're teaching it in schools and yeah. it's, it's taught as if it's a known thing. As if it's scientifically mm. confirmed, all, the, all, all of the processes are old and yeah. very well tested and yeah. 32 genders, I think my son was taught. So I Why asked, only 32 though? Well, I asked yeah. the beliefs and values <laughs> thing at the at, uh, parents' evening, I said, mm. why are you teaching that? And she said, no, you're right. And she was from Canada, I won't, yeah. I won't pers pers uh, go on with the accent. And she said, because one of my friends <laughs> One of my friend's children is actually um, two spirit. Oh, oh, <laughs> actually, right. Okay. And I said, um, "Are they indigenous? Are they like, <laughs> indigenous Canadians?" And she said, "No." I said, "Oh, so that's a bit of wouldn't you call that cultural appropriation? Possibly colonization." Uh, oh, just it's like, like insane. But yeah, the the schools, um, yeah. the judiciary, the fact that a woman who got punched by a trans woman to the floor had yeah. to say she yeah. and because she didn't say she she didn't get compensation for the property they damaged wow um, that's so demeaning that's you just... know, you're, you're, you're gonna have to respect your abuser mm. the, the the choices of your abuser even though they are abusing you and yeah destroying your property that and... could be a rapist yes. because the equality bench guidance for our judiciary and our yeah. courts says that you have to respect the pronoun right and the gender right okay yeah. So that could lead a rape victim having to call the man that raped her she. She. Well. Her penis. We we are we are certainly in uncharted territory yeah. here, aren't we? So I, I, getting, getting, going back um, uh, to, to the to the word woman, I find it very interesting how this is uh, the thing that you're choosing to defend, and I don't think it's wrong either. I think you're actually completely correct because I I've been studying the the philosophy of intersectionality for quite some time now mm. and one of the things that th there's just this consistent um, sort of drive towards absolute freedom and I, the way I I, I I perceive them to be viewing these things is that any kind of boundary is a form of oppression and so if you say right uh, women are adult human females then that necessarily excludes men males mm. from being in that category and what if someone just happens to want to, you know? Well, then that's a form of oppression because they're being denied yeah. whatever it is they think they want. And so I, I just find it really interesting that that's the thing that you have to defend. Because it, and, and you're, you're completely correct, because then when, when you have a discrete category, uh, you build on top of that, don't you? So you have women's gyms, and, and this is how mm. you do like women's changing rooms. And mm. I, I do agree that men and women should be able to have their own private spaces, you know? It's, yeah. Uh, obviously, and and anyone who's had any experience of being a human will know that when you've got a room full of, say, men and a woman walks in, mm -hmm. the demeanour changes. Yeah. And when you have a room full of women and a man walks in, the demeanour changes. There, there are behavioural differences, and it is part of you know it, it changes like a person's comfort, especially if it's say a place that people end up getting naked in, mm. like a changing room. Um, I, I, I do agree that they're probably, sh I mean, I'm happy for them to have trans, you know, male, yeah. female trans changing room, that's fine, I'd, that's a compromise I'd be happy with. But I, I have to say, I do agree that I, I, I don't, especially given the bar to entry is so low, you know. Yeah, they're not fighting for a third space no. in any way, shape or form. Yeah. They're fighting to, they, uh, 
I mean, I talk quite disparagingly about um, autogynophiles because I think they're predominantly the trans activists and they get a kick out of the discomfort that they cause. At, yeah. Like 100 percent. It's like we've got to pretend that that isn't a thing. Yeah. But we know it is. Yeah. You know, there's the, the, sometimes they're on Twitter sort of dancing around in a women's toilet just to annoy women. It's, um, you know, it's it's. And it's the way that they perceive womanhood. It's yeah. not, most, most regular men don't think that women go in toilet, share makeup and have pillow fights. But apparently, <laughs> apparently yeah, like true. some trans activists, they sort of, they'll talk about that, like this validating thing right. of these things that they do that they think women do. And women predominantly do things the same as men. Yeah. men. Yeah. You know, like. When, when, I, when I was 19, I, I worked at, um, uh, a pub and restaurant in, uh, in a bar in Newquay. And one of the jobs I had was to clean the toilets. And after cleaning the women's toilets, I tell you what, it, it completely destroys any illus illusions you hold about what women are like compared to men. They're, they are no more, uh, no more sacred in this regard. No. They, you know, they're, they're just well, I people. I thought we were. Yeah, exactly. But they, they're just people, you know, and they, they, they leave a mess uh, like everyone else. Oh, we, we don't smell as bad as men. I mean, I'm sure that is an evolutionary thing, <laughs> but, but we I, don't. I, I, have, I have encountered some disgusting things in the ladies' toilets don't, before I now. Don't so even want to know. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying women, women are not more sacred in this regard. Um, but yeah, so, so what's next for you? Um, I think I just want to keep saying it because fewer and fewer people are saying it. Hmm. Um, in fact, I guess more people are sort of fighting it. There's more cases and so on. There's Harry Miller, yes. um, Maya Forstater, um, and Susan Evans are all sort of bringing cases. But it's the institutions that we need to keep attacking. And with a majority Tory government, I have hope that there might be some sort of unified message if we all go and see our MP. The, the, um, the problem with the Tories, though, is they don't seem to be engaging on an ideological level with the things that are happening. And so... Or, like, the, the Tories have been in power for 10 years, and all of this is advancing under yeah. the Conservatives. And you'd think they would be pushing a more conservative worldview, given that they call themselves the Conservatives. Yeah. And they might, you know, and I, I'm just saying, if there's, if there's anything you're going to be conservative about, castrating children mm. is possibly one of those things that should be top of the list. You know? Yeah, I agree. I asked Maria Miller, chair of the Women and Equalities Committee, what is a woman? And she didn't answer. Same with the Joe uh, Swinson interview yeah. right on to you. Uh, that was a marvellous car crash. What's <laughs> a woman, and ten minutes later, she still hasn't defined it. <laughs> it's so... It, it's just the dishonesty of it. I think yeah. that's what really annoys me. Um, like at this, so I went to this conservative women's um, right. very posh lunch, and this woman who looked like the French and Saunders um, farmhouse stuff and nonsense when they used to cut their fingers off, and right, like yeah. in tweed, and she said, no. Oh, I, I support trans women. And I said, oh, that's great. I support Stunning women. Great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said, I just need you to know I support trans women. I said, well, I, I understand you support men, um, but I, I support women and, and I'd like women to keep our rights. Thanks very much. And so when I think what happened with the Tories is they did so badly with the whole Section 28 and mm. homophobia, even though Cameron's the one that bought an equal marriage, yeah. um, that I think they thought they had to tick some sort of liberal mm. box and they just picked the wrong one. Mm. And I, I, I think it just comes from that. And also what's happened mm. is you've got very powerful lobby groups like Stonewall yep. who got gay marriage, you know, mm. what was next, or let's, let's invent this new thing yep. to fight. And they got in with how vulnerable grown six foot two men in, you know, how, how much of a challenge it was for them to wear skirts. Right. Um, I mean, <laughs> new frontiers in human rights. But Down that's with what the matriarchy. Is. Well, I just, <laughs> can you, look, I just don't think if you get up in the morning and put a bad wig on hmm. and cover your stubble with cake, caked in makeup and hmm. put on a dress and walk out of your house I don't think you're vulnerable. I think you're pretty damn entitled. And I think that you, I, I just don't think that's a vulnerable act. A vulnerable act is hiding yourself away and being too fearful to go mm. and kind of charge at the world with this mm. identity, whatever it is. So the way that they, these people have been portrayed as vulnerable is really interesting. Um, and I think, it's a, I think it's an incredibly effective strategy, but I think it's a lie. 
Mm. Posey Parker, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs>